Have you ever seen or used sample libraries that have multiple pages, maybe for different controls or descriptions or prompts, but you can open them up in different tabs? Here is a way you can do that to your instruments as well. Hi, my name is Steve, composer, engineer, and lecturer, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at a bit of a tricky situation with contact scripting. We want to create two different pages with two different backgrounds. They need to have separate controls, separate functions. Many libraries have this type of functionality built in. They often have like an intro page, or an options page, maybe an articulations page or a sequencer page, lots of different things. It's something I wanted to create for my own library that I released recently to Piano Book called Collider Sky. If you want to find out more about Collider Sky, I'll let you check out this link above that I've got for you or down in the description. That way you can hear more about it and find out how to download it for free through the wonderful Piano Book community for samplers and composers. But how did I create the multiple backgrounds? That is what we're checking out today. So here is the library Collider Sky. It's essentially a guitar tremolo type library using swarming textures, utilizing delay pedals and other sorts of reversed effects in order to create a bit of a swarm of sound. Here's what it sounds like. I quite like it. I'm happy with the way that this one turned out. Now, you may be familiar already with contact scripting and how it sort of works, but essentially, if I open up the spanner here and I take a look at the script editor, you can see on this particular script slot, I have my script down here. Here is all of my code that is running my instrument. Now, this is quite a lot, and I've got many, many videos already and coming explaining how I use different coding options to be able to create your instruments. So feel free to subscribe for that, you know, if you want. But also you can download any of these instruments, open them up, and I have commented what is going on with the code. Such as here, it gives you a little bit of a comment to let you know that this is about the reverse slider. This one's about the modulation slider. So you can see how I've created and called them into being. And then as you go down, down further, you get to a point where it starts having the control function. What actually happens when we move this on screen control? So feel free to download the instrument, dive in and check it out, and jump over to my channel page to see more about how I create some of these textures. Okay, so in regards to multiple backgrounds, what I wanted with this library, if we take a look, is this button here. I wanted to be able to click this button and go to an information section. This is a little bit of a welcome screen as well as prompts on how the MIDI CC functionality works and what each one of the layers in the delays and layers boxes actually is. There's a little bit of information to help you when you're actually using the instrument know your way around a little bit. I make a lot of guides for these, like written guides that are included in the instrument, so feel free to dive into the manual, but I, you know, you know, nobody reads manuals. I don't know why I create them, but nobody reads them. So here is a few little shortcuts to be able to get you something. Anyway, so what do we have here? First of all, let's take a look at the actual graphic design. Here is the graphic design program. You can see my different uh, mock-up ideas for what it should look like, the actual background I ran with, and this one down here. Now, if designing your own custom graphics isn't something you've done before, check out the link above for my part one of three parts where I talk about how to script and how to create custom graphics within Contact. It's a really useful series. I hope you enjoy it. Check that out afterwards. Link is also in the description. That will actually walk you through how to create the graphics, what you actually need, how to get them into Contact, and what you actually need to create knobs, sliders, buttons, you name it. So whenever I create a library, I create a mock-up of what I want this interface to actually look like. That is this top one here with all the dials in place, all the sliders in place, everything is just exactly where I want it to be. Then as we come down a little bit, we have two backgrounds. One is the main instrument background and the other is my little welcome screen. Now you'd be forgiven for thinking that you could just dive into contact, dive into a second tab and just create a second series of scripts. Unfortunately, that won't work. You cannot have two different types of backgrounds to two different scripts, and all the controls will be present on the display all the time. There is a workaround though. What we need to do is create one giant background with both of them stacked, and then at the click of a button, offset that background. So as I scroll down here, you can see that I have created one giant background. So it's the top one of the controls, and then the info screen below, and it's all one single 
image. In doing this, we have one single background file that we can call into the script, and then we can offset that every time we click the button. It's kind of an ingenious way around it. Credit to the online resources, to be honest. Now, if you need some help on getting this image into contact, check out part two. I'll link it above also in the description. Part two of the contact custom graphics series goes into detail on how to get this into contact. It's a little bit more involved than just kind of dragging and dropping or setting a background image. So do check that out, but let's power on. When I dive into the script editor, into the spanner, into the script editor, we can see that I have called into being our wallpaper. Our wallpaper has been declared. It is now currently the background and that has set the wallpaper that we see on the instrument. Now, we can only see the top part and that is because the height of this interface is still only 592. It's actually 660 when you take into account the header at the top here, which is 68 pixels. Anyway, once we have that background in there, now what we need to do is call a button and that button will be the way that we toggle where the background is positioned, how much it's offset by. That's this button at the top here. And you can see as I hover over it, I've created a cool little graphic so that as you hover and click, it does something a little bit different. Again, check out that custom contact series if you wanna find out more about how to create that. It's quite a cool feature. So in the code, you can see down here, the info switch section. This section is declaring the variable, which is the button, then attaching the image to that. All that stuff is covered in the other tutorials, but pause the screen here if you wanna make any notes. All right, let's now move on to the actual functionality of it. Okay, so on UI underscore control, that is the callback that allows something to happen, a function of sorts to happen when we toggle a button on the display. Any knob, any slider, any button, all of these things are going to have an on UI control so that when you click that thing or drag that thing or whatever, you are going to do something to your instrument with it. So I've set my on UI to dollar sign INF. This is talking about the info button. I, I declared it as INF. I gave it a name of that. What I've said is if INF equals one, i.e. if the button is turned on, then set underscore skin underscore offset to 660. What this is saying is set the offset vertically to 660 pixels. That is actually the height of the background. So what I'm doing is I've got two 660 images stacked on top of each other and I'm offsetting it so that we're now gonna see the bottom one instead of the top one. The other part to remember is that an if statement always has an else. So if it's one, do this, but else do something different. So the sets underscore skin underscore offset is back here again, setting it to zero pixels offset. So it goes back to the top one, essentially. It's nice and easy. Simple as that for actually changing the background. Now, once you've got that function in there and you toggle on or off, it's going to do it. Now, what is all this other stuff, all these hide underscore part functions? When I set or change or move the background, it's not going to do anything to the controls that are already there. When this instrument loads, up, it loads up with all the controls for the EQ, for the different layers, for the reverb, for the delays, whatever. When I toggle between the two backgrounds, effectively I don't want to see any of those controls because none of those controls are needed on that page in my mind because I'm treating these as two separate pages. The background itself actually has all the text that I need on there. So all I need it to do is to hide all the controls and offset the background so that I can read the text. And then when I click the button again, I want all the controls to come back and the original UI to be displayed. So I use the hide underscore part. Now in the first one, when we're offsetting the background and we're wanting to hide the item, I set each of my controls. So I, I call in the control, such as dollar sign attack or ATT. So the attack control for dollar sign hide underscore whole underscore control. There's a little comma separating those as well. All of that in brackets means that now what it's gonna do is it's gonna take that control and it's gonna hide the whole thing. And I have done that, you can obviously see, for all of the different controls. Every single slider, every single knob that is on this screen has been hidden when that button is pressed. Except for the button, we still need that. And then you may have guessed it, of course, but on the else, we need to unhide everything. It's the same function, hide underscore part, but this time, we're saying hide part nothing. So you don't hide anything. Basically saying reveal this. Of course, we need to do an end if and an end on. So they are both there to end the if statement and end the on UI control. And once that's then, we just click apply and jump back to our instrument and see the magic unfold. We click this button and there it is. Click the button again 
everything comes back. Really simple once you know how to do it and quite an ingenious workaround to something that seemed like a very difficult problem. As I've said, a lot of these issues I've come across in my own libraries while building them, and I've had to use online forums and resources and go diving into the internet for these answers. If you wanna take a shortcut, why not subscribe to my channel? I'm gonna be sharing a lot more videos on how I create these libraries and some of these workarounds and scripting magic that we can kind of use to fast track our time as much as possible and create a really solid and robust library that works for everyone. So consider subscribing for some more but otherwise, until next time, I'll catch you later.